video is brought to you by G2A.com for cheap games, MSP, and PSN codes. Hey guys, how's it going? Master Bucks here. Welcome to another episode of the Newcastle United Career Mode in FIFA 16. And today, we are going to finally get kicked off with the January transfer window. We have made it. Second season January transfer window. And guys, before we advance, before we skip or play or do whatever with this first game and get into the transfers, there's one bit of business that we have to address. In the previous episode, I asked you guys to vote, of course, for whether or not we do a uh, financial takeover, whether we get that slight injection of cash or that pretty decent uh, injection of cash into the team so that way we can make a bunch of great signings. I left it all down to you guys. It was 100% your decision. And ladies and gentlemen, you were pretty vocal. And ladies and gentlemen, we have our decision. And it is going to be in favor of the takeover. As you can see from the poll, we had around about nearly 3,000 or around about 3,000 people vote in this Twitter poll. And in the end, it was around about 60% in favor of doing the financial takeover. So we're going to go through and pick one up right now. This is what you guys voted for, and this is what you're going to get. And by the way, it's not going to be a ridiculous financial takeover. I'm not going to go nuts so butcher and just get the biggest one possible. This is just going to be a level 10 financial takeover. It's still a very good, de it's very decent amount of money, but it's nothing absolutely crazy. And then again, even though we're getting a nice 30, 40, however many dollars, million dollars worth of uh, cash that we're now getting in, it's not going to affect us as big as, say, we were doing this with the Road to Glory team. And I definitely wanted to do a financial takeover at some point in a FIFA 16 career mode, whether it be with Newcastle or another team. I've always wanted to do one, or I felt like it's been a while and I definitely wanted to do one. And doing it now with Newcastle is way better and has much less of an effect than doing it with, say, Portsmouth or something like that. That is, That would be ridiculous. I would not do that. But this, I feel much better about. Let's get it. That's how much that we have right now. You can see additional funds in career. The notifications come up, but no cash has been injected as of yet. I'm probably just going to simulate this first game against Peterborough in the FA Cup really quickly. Hopefully get the win as we should. We're at home. This team is not a Premier League quality team there. Championship, whatever. Skip. We immediately got a goal and it was a 3-0 victory. Pretty comfortable. Hopefully we should get the cash now. And holy shit, did we get the cash or what? That is tons. I didn't think we were getting that much money, but we got a shitload of money. A hundred million. Wow, I was not expecting that. That was a level 10 financial takeover, and we got that much cash from it. A hundred mil. Wow, well, we've got a lot to work with. And the first things that I am going to do are sign the players that we are supposed to be getting. The players that have gone to Newcastle in real life. The first one being Andros Townsend. Now, we can get him on a pre-contract, but since he's a player that, you know, is playing for Newcastle right now, and we've got the funds for him, I'm going to go to buy him straight away. We could get him on the cheap as well. I'm probably going to offer maybe seven, seven million to start off with straight away. Could get lucky, but around that sort of margin. And now for the next player, which is Sado Dumbia. And of course, we haven't actually got him... Uh, we don't own Sado Dumbia. We have him on loan. But you know what? I reckon we still want to bring him in. We still want to get him. We don't know what his overall is. But I think we can pretty safely we can safely assume that it is around that 80-odd 80, 80 rating. But still, this time, I'm not going to loan him. I'm just going to buy him straight away, flat out. Sado Dumbia, we could get him between 18 and 21 million. I'm going to go with just the 17 million. So 2 million more than his value. And one more thing that we're going to do before we leave, it's time to go in with pre-contract signings. We're about to absolutely smash it. The first one's going to be Antonio Rudiger. We're definitely needing another centre-back, and this guy looks like he would be quality. Absolutely sensational. 28, uh, 23 years of age and 78 overall. He could definitely get better. 90 grand uh, is the salary that he's demanding, so five years there, and hopefully it should just resort itself like, yep, yep, no, that's fine. This one's going to be a bit of a crazier one. Lee Lucas, he's one of those glitch players in Karimo that I just keep seeing popping up time and time again. And he's now at 75. I've got a weird feeling that if we get this guy on a pre-contract, by the time we get him next season, he could be in the 80s maybe. It could happen. And if it does, I'd be amazed. But we're going to do it. He wants 50 grand. We're going to give him 50 grand. Five years. No squad role if we don't need to. And boom. And the final one that we're going to pick up is Marco Arnautovic. Another player on a pre-contract. Another left midfielder that we're going to need. We've got plenty of right midfielders. But the sad thing is we don't actually have a quality left midfielder apart from Rolando Aarons. Everyone else is really not that great. I mean, the only other left back that, or left mid that I think we have is Sammy Amiobi, and he's low 70s, not getting very good, not not getting any better, and only getting older. So I definitely want another quality left back or left mid just to improve the depth in that area. So Marco Arnautovic is another signing. 
I've been very keen on Marco Arnautovic for a very long time. I've been a big fan of his since before he came to the Premier League, since his uh, Werder Bremen days or back in the Bundesliga. He was sensational very a long, long time ago. He really was good. And um, yeah, now he's been killing it in the Premier League. So I've got renewed interest in him and I definitely want to pick him up. And hopefully, once again, there should be no issues and we can get him as well. There are other players that we could sign as well. Matthew Ryan, not necessarily on a pre-contract, but we are looking at getting a new goalkeeper. Liali, I think we can get on a pre-contract. Yes, but again, he's only 74 overall. So to be fair, now that we have as much cash as we have, we could probably even go for someone a bit better. And then you've got, of course, Loic Remy and Alexandra Lacazette. These guys, oh, I tell you what, I would love to get Lacazette, but I mean, how many strikers do we have? And at the same time, we're getting Doombia. I know that we've got a shitload of cash and we really should be spending it now before it all disappears or not necessarily disappears, but goes down. But I really don't think I should get Lacazette in the same season that we're getting Doombia as well as all these other ones. So I reckon... We're probably going to still hold off on Lacazette. It might happen season three. We can even get Braithwaite on a pre-contract, but again, same argument. We're getting Sado Dumbia, so I don't think it's necessary. And holy shit, am I glad that I did this financial takeover with Newcastle. Because imagine if I did that with Portsmouth. And Portsmouth, a little League 2 Road to Glory team with 100 million. The effect that it would have would be insane. Like... With Newcastle, you start off with around 40, 50 million, so that's about twice as much as you get at the start. I can't even imagine what it would be if you did it with Portsmouth. That'd be like 200 fucking times more than what you got. It has certainly had quite an effect on this career mode, but nowhere near as big as an effect as it would have had with a Roach Glory team or any other team. But yeah, all right, we're done. We're going to get into this first game against Manchester City before we bring in any of our new signings, uh, Andros Townsend, Sato Dumi, and all those lot. We're going to get into this one. First game of the episode. A couple of ties that are quite, a uh, couple of plays that are quite tied, but hopefully we can still put in a decent performance against Man City. It will be tough, but here we go. Here is the Manchester City lineup. They've always got a bunch of new superstars. They've got Edison Cavani, Tony Cruz, uh, Javier Martinez is another one as well. I'm looking at their bench as well. Yeah, it's, it, it, it's mental. They've got some great, unbelievable players. They are definitely going to be a threat. Oh my god, he made the tackle, but he somehow still got the cross in. And he... Holy shit, I have no idea how they were... What is going on right now? I don't fucking understand. There's so much shit that just happened within so few... Within such a little amount of time. I, I just have no idea what the hell happened. And there's a foul in there. Holy fuck. What the fuck happened? Big tackle on Nazare. Oh my goodness, that was huge. Big one on the fellow countryman. What the fuck is going on? I don't know what's going on today, but this game's just been fraught with shit. I did not... I, yeah, I took, the, I took the defender that should have been marking Jesus Navas. But what happened there? There was this non-touch by whoever the fuck it was. I think it might have been Steven Taylor. But I just don't know. The ball was right there. He went to go to take it under control. And in the end, just did not fucking do a thing. And then they got the ball, went up the other end and scored. I don't know, I don't fucking understand how that happened, but still. Might still be on. Nobody wants to go on a run. All the gaps are there. They're opening up for us, but nobody wants to go. One out of them. It's a decent cross. It's punched away by Cavalero, and we're going to get another chance. Good block by Willems. It falls right to, yeah, John Joe Shelby takes the header down. Charlie Austin. Do we have players up for a counterattack? We really don't. Iose Perry is doing well to hold up. Come on. We can, if we work this well, we can get away. And we have. Done well, Charlie Austin. Go for a powerful shot. Charlie Austin hits the post. Header is won by Cabela, but he just cannot get enough on it, and it can't beat Carbolero. Big tackle, John Joe Shelby. God, he's been amazing today so far. Have a pop. John Joe Shelby. Oh, my God. Now we're starting to get shots off. We're getting tons of shots off. They're not great, but they're still chances. Oh, my God. This game's doing my head in. You know what? We're 1-0 down right now, but I don't feel that bad. I don't feel like I'm out of control or anything like that. I feel like I'm... I say I'm playing okay, but there's just some things, some dumb things that keep happening in this game, which I, uh, I'm partially to blame for, and then some things that just happen out of nowhere, but I don't feel too bad. I guess what I'm trying to say is if maybe I take my time with it a little bit more, and I'm a bit patient and a bit smarter, the chances will come, and I reckon we'll be able to pick up at least a goal or two. Good turn. That's a good ball too. Play on advantage. Go, Perez. Oh, he's taking me out. Please. They... Oh, I can't believe it. Perez, how didn't you get the shot off there? Well, now we've got a, at least a pretty decent chance to score. 
please fucking Musa Suzoko score this one. We, we need you to so badly, please. I think it's decent. It might be saved by Carvalero. That is a interesting little clearance. Come on, we need to go for this. We need to go fucking all out. Down the middle, straight up, down the middle. Good ball. And another quick one, go! Yes, there it is. Oh my God, I swear to God, if, if fucking Carbolero kept us out one more time, I'd have gone mad. But yes, we've got it. Finally, it's 1-1. One, one. Charlie Austin, the hero of our season so far, comes up big with a equalizer. And do we have time to maybe win this game if we've got the momentum? Oh my God, a big tackle by Ginny Wine Adam. And there it is. This is huge. Absolutely gigantic! It's Emo as a kill! We've won it in stoppage time! Look at this. He's surrounded by two players, nowhere to go. And Tony Cruz gives up the ball in the worst area possible. Man City were going too hard for it. They just conceded. They were devastated. They wanted the win back. And they've gone too much. Gone too hard to get it. And the new sub, and the sub, Ezekiel, has gone on to fucking get us the game winner. Unbelievable scenes, Jeff. And now just go to defensive, please. Let's just hold. Let's just hang on. Or we could sneak. Oh my god, how didn't we take the tackle? It doesn't matter. We win this game. Oh my god, what a fucking result and what an end to it. We just got the goal with Charlie Austin. The ball fell right back to us after it was saved by Carvalero. And then he assisted after a brilliant tackle. Not sure who by it. Might have been genuine out him. And then the pass into Austin. It was two versus one. One defender containing the two. Never going to happen. Ezekiel went on and scored. And we've won a brilliant result. That was such a bizarre game. Like everything that could have gone wrong or not gone in our favor absolutely did for the first 75 minutes and then right toward the end things started just getting a little bit better for us like I felt like I was playing pretty decently for the majority of the game even though we were 1-0 down I was feeling really good I just felt a lot of 50-50 things just weren't happening for me and right toward the end there oh my god how many favors did we get we pulled out the goal the equalizer and then they overcommit as they usually do in the last few minutes and we fucking got the goal it was unbelievable Let's do now some player training as well. And Bemba, Armstrong, and Aaron, it's the same people, but we're going to keep on going. We're going to persist. And what do we have here? We've got Mbemba going up by a little bit. Not by a little bit, by a ton. He's nearly at the 80 mark. Uh, Armstrong, not by much. And Aaron's by a little bit as well. Are we going to hear back from anyone yet? We have a Bournemouth approach for Antonio Rudiger, when we already have. But the pre-contract's been accepted, so we don't have to worry. We've got a transfer offer for Charlie Austin. Fuck no. You would be... Holy shit, we, get a, we could get a good amount of money for him for being a 27-year-old, but no, we're rejecting all offers. Roma want $26 million for Sado Dumbia when we originally offered 17. 26. I'll try to find the middle ground here. No, not that much. No, not that much. I'm going to go for $23 million. That's not really middle ground. It's just a bit above, but hopefully they can accept 3 mil less. Uh, we'll, we'll see, but Antonio Rudiger has accepted a pre-contract offer, as has Lee Lucas and Marco Arnautovic. They're both the players that I think I wanted. However, it just turned out that the player that we were looking for just picked up an injury, although that doesn't really affect us, because we're not going to get him until the end of next season. And by that, I mean the start of next season, not the end of next season. But anyway, we're going to get Antonio Rudiger. That's fantastic. We're going to get Marco Arnautovic. Yes, just sort out the budget, please. And the other player that we're going to pick up is Lee Lucas. I'm hoping and I'm banking off the fact that he could be about 80 rated. That is, of course, he could be 80 rated by next season. But anyway, let's sim this next game against Middlesbrough. We've already had a great result in the Premier League. Can we get another one against this team? We've already got an injury. We've already got a goal. So it's a, you know, just been hit with a, a very a positive and a negative straight away. And we fucking pump Middlesbrough 4-0. We've gotten an injury to Tim Krull, which is not good, because we are going to need to pick up a new goalkeeper now. I can almost guarantee you, Tim Krull, this would be, depending on how long we've lost him for, this could be bad. He's only going to be out for seven days, that's okay. But um, at the same time, I was like, did he continue on in that game? Because I don't have a goalkeeper on the bench. So I'm assuming he went the whole way, so fucking good on him. More player training. Aaron's could maybe go up by a little bit, and Bemba maybe as well. And Bemba has gone up by a bit. I can't believe he's still not 80, but... Still, there he is. Roma have accepted the 23 million for Sado Dumbia. So we are going to uh, hopefully pick this bloke up without any worries. So 100 grand, five years, and submit. And of course, we need to send in another offer for uh, Andros Townsend since our 7 million was denied. Of course, 
I thought we would uh, be able to get him for a pretty cheap amount because he's in his last year of his contract, but now we'll go for a $10 million bid. All right, Sato Dumbia, let's do this. Let's play your little game. 120 grand. And boom, I'm going to hit you with the absolutely useless 20% bonus per goal. Let's fucking do it. I can't believe that's still a thing, that 20%. It literally does nothing. But anyway, this next game against Manchester United, we will play it. And we'll hopefully hear back from, uh, what, Spurs and from Roma and from Sadodumia and from Angels Townsend and get those two wrapped up. And we could potentially have made five signings in this one episode. But before we continue on with the player training, we're going to play this other game against Manchester United now. We've already played City. Now it's United's turn. Can we get it done? I hope so. I'm, I'm feeling good after that last win, that two goals smashing grab. We just got them right toward the end there. Can we do it again at Old Trafford? Let's go. We're going for an absolutely brilliant episode here. We're going for four wins out of four. This Manchester United team looks crazy with Halilovic, Martial and Rooney up front. Rooney, by the way, is the leading goal scorer in the Premier League, as of course uh, we saw in, at the start of the, uh, of the first game that we played today. And of course, we are maybe going to sign five players in this, in this episode as well. Five transfer window signings, four wins out of four. I could not imagine a better episode. We're going for four out of four. We're going for it. Here we go. Oh, Willems, he's stuck out of foot and he just got there. And by now, Adam now. And this could be big. We got numbers up the middle now. We got to go. Perez, I'm looking at you. Good ball. Is it over hit? No, it isn't. Little fake shot. And then hit it hard immediately. Ayoso Perez, it's 1 0. Brilliant start. Brilliant first attack. And that is an amazing. Yeah, what an amazing start. It's going superbly. That through ball, that almost toe poke esque through ball. And the fake shot had to hit it immediately. Thankfully, the defender, number five, whoever it is, Marcos Rojo maybe, he sort of almost laid off a little bit. Like, I thought we were going to get tackled there, but no, he got the shot off, and it was just enough to get past Valdez. We're 1-0 up within 13 freaking minutes. What, just an amazing start, and Perez, he's had a big start to this game already. Not a good ball, not a good ball at all. Up the middle. And he holds, he bangs, and oh my, a part of me thought that went in for a second. That is not a good pass at all, in my opinion, because Suzoko is a weak and slow fucking cunt. He is not being able to deal with Luke Shaw. Are you kidding me? One of Suzoko is meant to be one of the powerhouses of the Newcastle team. He's meant to be strong, fast, holds up well, bullies players. He's not being able to bully Luke Shaw right now. EA Sports, what are you fucking thinking? I just hope for more of the same in this half. We've just got to keep on keeping on. Well, that's a foul. No, it isn't, apparently. Yes, it is. Is it? It's a foul on fucking us. All right, well, I swear to God, if that's the sort of half we're in for, then Jesus, just forget about it. We're not winning this game. Is he on side? I think he might be. He might be. Square it up. Bang. Oh, come on, Genie. Back heels it. No. Oh, my God. How didn't we fucking score again? I swear there's, like, only one area of the goal that you... Oh, fucking no. This is not good. I'm keeping him on side. Holy shit, he dealt with that very well, considering it was a one-on-two, really. He did fucking great. FIFA 16 passing, once fucking again. Held down RB, held down A, went to go to pass it to, the, to switch up the play, ends up, for some reason, thinking I'm trying to pass to my goalkeeper. And no, that is not the player I was trying to get it to. And even then, the pass went fucking nowhere. Can't believe this. Great, amazing tackle. Yes, yes, come on. Yes! Genie one Adam, I got so quiet there. But Genie one Adam with the absolute ball control of oh my god, Lionel Messi esque. Maybe not, but oh my god, that ball control to just keep it to his feet was sensational. Genuine Adam, he's got it back with a guy all over him, being just surrounded by, who is that? Uh, Schweinsteiger. He just manages to clip the post and put it in. This goal might not be though. Bah! That is, oh, that is so bad. God, well, no, no one to blame there. That was just, um, I came out to fucking try to get the ball, missed, and I left space. I got no one to blame there but myself. Unfucking believable. Right as we equalize, they get it back. I should be winning this game by fucking heaps, but I just keep letting them get back into it because I'm a fucking idiot. Oh my god, he just got the ball through. I can't believe it. And a quick one. Hold it up. 
I don't fucking believe it. We've been gifted a chance. Charlie Austin tried to thread it through to Yayose Perez. I don't believe it. It got... Okay, look, I'm trying to get the ball to Iose Perez here. He took too fucking long, way too long. Their two defenders just... I can't believe it. Their two defenders collide, fall to ground. Austin, the ball goes straight to him and he gets a chance to just smash it past... I can't believe it. Wow. An absolute gift. This game just keeps throwing up even more ridiculous ways of scoring. Oh, but so fortunate that time. That time, we were fortunate. They made a horrendous error. And now we just can't, we have to make sure that we don't do the exact same thing, please. Great tackle by Walker. Just throw it to the guy where all the space is. That's right. Suzuko. That's it. We're done. 3 2. And in the end, we were given a. Oh my god, a massive, massive error by the two Manchester United defenders to collide together. They all went to ground. And Charlie Austin, with all the time in the world, to just smash it. And that's exactly what he did. The two goals that we scored, I was very happy with. But that last one. It was a gift. But then again, we definitely kept Manchester United in this game when they really shouldn't have. But this, oh, this is another big win. Four wins out of four. Incredible result. The only way to make this better is if we end up signing both Andros Townsend and Seydou Numbia in this episode. Because if we do, then oh my goodness me, that would be just freaking perfect. And Bemba's now gone up to an 80 as well. And immediately after we come out of that game, we see the contract offer accepted from Sado Dumbia. So welcome to Newcastle, lad, and we still have about 70 million left. And you know what I've decided as well? Like, Andros Townsend, we've got plenty of right midfielders. You are a Newcastle player right now, but I feel like if we at least get him, then that's what counts. And I'm not going to pay 17 million for a guy that I could get for free if I just pay his wages. I think I've finally sort of had a bit of a come to, you know, just realize what's going on here. We don't need him straight away. Five years, we don't need the 20% either, but five years, eight grand, and that should be fine. And if he can accept that contract before the 23rd, then hopefully, maybe, pre-contract before, that was the very next day. Unbelievable. So that brings the total transfers in this episode to fucking five. One last set of play training drills as well. So some for Adam Armstrong and Bemba and of course Aaron's and Armstrong goes up for one of each. Stats gets to about halfway, but no overall growth. But guys, this is going to do the end of this episode. We're now on the 23rd of January. We've got another FA Cup game against Bristol. Another notification coming soon. It's taking its time and it's nothing crazy. We have 17 million for CM De Jong. It's a decent amount of money for a player that we're not really playing, and we've got other players that we could be playing if need be, like Henri Savet and uh, others as well. So, you know, I, I might leave it with you guys. Obviously, what's done's done, but do you think I should accept that? 17 million for Sam Dion, or should I hang on to it? Please let me know. I'm always looking to get you guys involved. I got you involved with the financial takeover. You decided that you want it, and we've done it, and now we've gotten tons of cash, tons of signings in, and still plenty left over. I'm, in fact, we've only really spent 40 million of the 100 million that we have. So that's pretty mental. That's pretty crazy. But either way, guys, that's going to do it for this episode of the Newcastle United Career Mode. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you haven't already. Let me know should we sell CM De Jong. And uh, yeah, until the, next, until the next episode, my name's Master Bucks. Have a good one. Bye-bye.